most famous quantum protocol, quantum, quantum teleportation. But in general, we are interested in modeling quantum protocols, and they all share some uh, common features. We often have concurrent processes, so agents that act independently. They can uh, synchronize with some communication primitives, and we often have non-deterministic behavior, and since we are doing quantum computing, also probabilistic behavior resulting from measurements. To model such quantum protocols, we resort to quantum process calculi. So our processes are terms of an algebra, and the operators of our algebra are um, um, the ways of composing together processes just uh, corresponding to the features we've seen before. And to give the semantics to these uh, process algebras, we use uh, label transition systems. So a set of states with a transition relation. For example, um, here we're talking about quantum process calculi. We use transition systems where the states have this form. So a pair with rho, a density operator, representing the quantum values, and p, which is a process that is the classical part, similar to what is done for the operational semantics of imperative languages. Here we can see, for example, the semantics of a parallel composition. We have a process on the left, a process on the right, and they can uh, execute before left and right, or right and left, uh, non-deterministically. Uh, for an example of quantum behavior, we see that, suppose we have, starting on uh, the few plus state, so a two qubit entangled state, we perform a destructive measurement on the first qubit in the zero one basis. And we see that after a transition level as tau, we end up in a probability distribution. Probability distribution of the configuration where we are left with the zero state and the one state. So this is a probabilistic LTS or PLTS. When working with PLTS, the notion of semantic equivalence of choice to compare their behavior is bisimilarity. Simply put, two LTS are bisimilar if um, each one can replicate, can emulate the behavior of the other. So to make an example, similar to the one before, phi plus gets measured in the zero one basis, measured destructively, or uh, get measured in the Hadamard plus minus basis. Should these two transition systems, probabilistic transition system, be, be similar? Uh, for the most proposals in literature, they are not. Uh, because uh, generally the um, process on the left goes with a one alpha probability here when we can see the zero state and the process on the right cannot replicate this behavior because cat plus, cat bra plus is observably different than cat bar minus. Um, but if we think about it from the, the physics point of view, what we have here in these distributions is just a mixed state and we know that representing them as mixed state, a mixture of zero and one is identical to i over 2, that is identical to a mixture of 1 and 2. So our argument is that the natural notion of probabilistic bisimilarities on such uh, probabilistic transition systems of quantum configurations is not, is not adequate to model the observational, observational capabilities and observational limitations of quantum theory. We already tackled this problem in uh, our talk at Popol a few days ago. We proposed constraint saturated bisimilarity, which keeps this model, so probabilistic transition systems, and changes the notion of bisimilarity. But uh, it also has some disadvantages. First of all, our proposed bisimilarity is not a congruence, so it's not preserved by the operators of our of our process algebra, and uh, we lack algorithmic verification, because in general, if we're given, for example, a process and uh, its implementation, to verify that they are equivalent, that they are bisimilar, we should build an infinite number of transition systems, one for each possible quantum input, and verify that they are bisimilar. So we try a different, more foundational approach. We want to represent them in a new semantic model, the, and we want, in particular, to represent the correct observational properties of quantum systems. So, go back to physics. How to model the observable properties of quantum systems? Through FX. Uh, if you're not familiar with them, FX are um, parameterized probabilities. That is, they are convex functions that, when you give them as input a quantum state, they give you a uh, probability. In a sense, they are fuzzy predicates on the set of, uh, of quantum states. 
but at the same time these functions can be represented neatly as uh, matrices as um, d by d matrices uh, smaller uh, than the identity positive matrices uh, so we will continuously go back and forth between fx as matrices and fx as function on states and this homomorphism is just the well-known um, born rule of taking a state and uh, multiplying it by these effects so this measurement operator if you want and taking the trace this is from what we start and we will uh, build increasing uh, and increasing structure on uh, these effects from effects we can build effect distribution so functions that uh, to assign to each state of a, a carrier set x uh, a weight that is an effect we require that uh, uh, the support of a uh, effect distribution D is finite, so the set of X that have some weight, some non-zero weight, is finite, and the sum of all these weights must be smaller than the identity in the loner order. If you reflect about, uh, upon this, uh, this is a generalization of uh, usual probability distribution. These are just probability distribution are one-dimensional um, effect distribution because one times one matrices are just real numbers. But since effects are um, parameterized probabilities, effect distributions are parameterized probability distribution. We uh, have exactly the same lifting, uh, the same isomorphism as before. We can lift it uh, in a pointwise manner. So on these new effect distributions, we can uh, do, perform some operators. So we have the point distribution or delta distribution. Uh, we have a um, weighted sum of distributions in which uh, we have as weight uh, fx in general and not just probabilities. Notice that here we are composing effects and distributions with the tensor operator. So in our intuition this represents that um, we are building a bigger effect that is measuring more qubits. So this operation here represents some kind of measurements where we first measure uh, the first qubits, and if we get this outcome i, then we we'll continue measuring the the distribution defining defined in the, as the i. Then, as with the probabilities, we can lift a relation on states to a relation on probability on effect distributions. So uh, we say that two distributions are related when. Uh, uh, two states are related, then the point distributions are related, and if we have n distributions that are related, their effect composition is still related. Thanks to effect distributions, we build effect transition system. Again, a generalization of, of PLTS. An LTS, we have uh, is a set of uh, states, uh, some actions, and a transition relation that from a state and an action goes in one or in possible many um, effect distributions. Here we can see that we have um, effects as weights on this distribution, we can have also sub-distributions in general, and we can still can have non-deterministic behavior. What can we do with these LTS? Our idea is that uh, we will use them to model quantum protocols, so we are interested in representing in this semantics object the, those features of uh, programming of uh, quantum protocols. So we have non-deterministic sum of LTS, we have parallel composition of LTS with also synchronization, and we have evaluation of an LTS, because an LTS, again, is in a sense a, para a parameterized probabilistic LTS. From these LTS here, where we have uh, uh, Fx as weight, we can instantiate it with a state row, and get a probabilistic LTS. It's exactly the same structure as before, but on the weights, instead of having um, an effect like D of S prime, we have a probability. It is just applying the Born rule. So we have trace of D of S prime times rho. If rho is bigger, then we can take the, the partial trace. But Interestingly, for this kind of LTS, we can um, define two different notions of bisimilarity. The first one is uh, the axel mendel bisimulation and axel mendel bisimilarity simply says that when S and uh, T are bisimilar, it's required that when S goes in a distribution delta, then T can replicate the behavior going in a distribution theta, and delta and theta must be related by that uh, relation lifting we see before. 
Otherwise, Larsen Scobie similarity uh, requires that S goes in delta and T goes in theta, uh, but delta and theta must essentially assign the same weight to the equivalence classes of R. So we are requiring, requiring that R is an equivalence. These two notions, interestingly, give exact the same, um, these two definitions give exactly the same notion of bisimilarity for the probabilistic case. They are both called larsen scope bisimilarity, usually. But in the quantum case, we have two different relations. See an example. Here we have um, 0 and 1 as weights of this effect distribution, or either just i, that is a complete effect distribution, or plus and minus. When we're using uh, axel mendel bisimilarity, these are not bisimilar, because we have the same pattern as before. Uh, tau cannot replicate the behavior of S, because uh, S goes with a uh, cat plus zero weight, and tau can only go with a uh, cat plus plus and cat plus minus weight. But if we instead uh, are using um, larsen scope bisimilarity, they are bisimilar, because we are considering the um, equivalence classes. We say that S1 and S2 are equivalent because they are in deadlock, as well as V, as well as T1 and T2. So we say that S goes in this equivalence class of S1 and S2 with a weight that is the sum, that is cat plus 0 plus cat plus 1, that is exactly the identity, that is exactly the weight of cat plus plus, plus cat plus minus. Um, so we have that Axel Mendel, Axel, Axel Mendel Bisimilarity is uh, strictly coarser than the Larsen score one, and we advocate that this Larsen score bisimilarity is the notion of choice for ELTS because we can resort back to the um, probabilistic behavior we've seen before. We have this operation of uh, instantiating, of evaluating an LTS, and we can, we can prove that if S and T are bisimilar, then uh, for any possible input, when I instantiate them to probabilistic LTS, these probabilistic LTS are bisimilar. Then we can finally use our um, effect transition system to give you the semantics of quantum protocols. We start from a very minimal example because we are interested in understanding how the most basic features of quantum uh, entanglement and measurements plays along together with non-determinism. So we just have communication, we have non-deterministic behavior, parallel composition, and measurements. We only talk about uh, um, destructive measurements. For this kind of process algebra, we can uh, give a novel, I a novel effect semantics, a sort of Heisenberg style semantics. It's, dif it's different from what is done usually, where we have a state, the quantum state, and we update it as long as we, co uh, we, we continue. Here, instead, we do not represent the quantum state, but we update the effect uh, after, if, after each transition. We update uh, the set of effects that we would apply on a state. So let's make an example. Here we have, starting from the, the, the unit effect, we have a process that performs a tau transition and then a measurement. If I measure 0, I continue as P. If I measure 1, I continue as Q. And so it gives us, of course, an effect transition system with these weights. And we uh, store inside these configurations, where we have an effect, uh, an effect and a process, we store the effect we've just seen. Because if we, for example, suppose that P now performs a um, plus-minus measurement in the, the Hadamard base, we accumulate these effects on the weights and in the configuration. So at our move, and then we see the weights 0 plus and 0 minus. Uh, why we do this? Why don't we leave just 0 and 1 here and plus and minus there? Because we are interested in, of course, dealing with uh, entanglement. And if we have entanglement, uh, we have just um, we have to consider the composition of effects to to, for example, notice the differences between phi plus and phi minus. If we just have, uh, if, we, if we just had fx one after the other, we couldn't catch these dif differences in the phase. So, um, going to conclude, we have this new Heisenberg approach uh, where we have configurations with fx and process 
uh, we can give the usual uh, Schrodinger approach with the with a transition with a transition system with states and processes. And interestingly, they are the same in a sense that if we take this FA transition system on the left and we evaluate with an input row, for example, here with the zero zero state, we get exactly this um, probabilistic transition system. This is for our small language without unitaries, but we uh, can add unitaries as well. We simply, instead of uh, configurations uh, with FX, we must also store um, super operators in general to, to, to keep track of the FX of unitaries on states. But the structure, the algebraic structure, is the same. It is still an ELTS uh, with FX on the labels that when we measure, when we apply um, an input state gives us a probabilistic uh, transition system. So this is our main theorem. Uh, our FX semantics is correct and complete with respect to the state-based semantics. This means that two states are be similar in the Heisenberg-ish approach if and only if they are be similar when we plug the state inside it. And this means that instead of building an infinite number of probabilistic LTS here to compare if two protocols, if two processes in general are be similar, we just one, we compare just one couple of effect LTS, allowing for algorithmic verification. So this is the situation we have now. We have improved. We now also have uh, the possibility for algorithmic verification. We have quantum indistinguishability because uh, we are using exactly what quantum theory prescribed as observational properties. And we are still um, investigating. It's a work in progress if our notion is a congruence for our operators and uh, if it maintains the correct notion of non-determinism. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Gabriel. Um, questions? Uh, so I was a little bit confused. Mm -hmm. So which actions are observable if I have a different measurement? Your motivating example is I'm doing a different measurement and I'm arriving at the same mixed states. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then the choice of measurement isn't observable in the system? What's, what's going on? Yeah, because, for example, um, also, also here, um, we uh, predicated that we should not observe the difference of measuring the 0, 1, or plus and minus uh, um, base if you do not communicate the, um, the action as before. So in this case, since these states are all be similar, if a faraway party measures in the 0, 1, or plus and minus basis without, without telling you anything, you should not be capable of observing anything, if, even if you have entangled states with them. So we just, um, otherwise, if we had um, different uh, behave, classical behaviors here between S1 and S2, in that case, we of course observe that this branch here has a zero weight and this branch here has a plus weight. There are some observable differences. Okay. No, it's, it's mm -hmm. I didn't realize that you intended the, the choice of measurement to be a private action. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's the idea in a protocol setting. We don't know what the other uh, processes are doing. Yeah. Other questions? So I was wondering mm -hmm. something. Um, when you had this AM by Simon, Similarity. Yep. It looked like it was insufficient in part just because kind of you could get to two distributions that were should have been equivalent but were not identical. Could you kind of extend AM by sim similarity yep. mm -hmm. by taking like a closure of this? Um, in other words, mm -hmm. if it takes you to two quite yeah. similar in a sense. And then we can apply some uh, equivalence some on these uh, similarity, on these distributions. Mm -hmm. uh, this is actually, uh, thank you for the interesting question, this is an approach we tried uh, a few times ago, but um, is less natural, I would say, because, for example, it becomes difficult to have a similarity that is um, 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 closed for composition, that is transitive, because if, for example, okay, S goes here and T goes there, and they are not by similar, but I can rewrite them to be by similar, it's fine. But then if I have something else, for example, X that goes in YZ, then I don't know if 
uh, my writing here is the same that goes from t to x. So it risks to break the transitivity of, uh, of, uh, of our uh, bisimilarity that we need. I see. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you.